What are we making? Aubergine. What's this? Fossil Bluff is one of the most remote cabins in the world and is used as a staging post for operations in Antarctica for British Antarctic Survey. The nearest humans are 255 miles away at Rotherham, and the nearest civilization is 900 miles away. The nearest hospital is 1,200 miles away from Fossil Bluff. We are truly remote. There are no fuel stations in Antarctica, so we need to depot fuel at certain points to be able to travel across the continent. This red line shows a ski way in which planes will land and drop fuel off to build up a depot at Fossil Bluff. Once a depot has been built up, a plane can land, be refueled, and travel further into Antarctica to build up a bigger depot. This is how we can reach the far corners of Antarctica to complete our science. The logistics of building these depots is fascinating, and I'm going to do another video on it very soon. So the real reason me and John are here today isn't for the planes, it's because there is a science site on this island and it's measuring isostatic rebound. It's gone down and we're here to repair it. Cue montage music. A bit warm. Fuck. So we're here at Fossil Bluff to repair one of the science sites that's gone down. Uh, Fossil Bluff is one of Bass's main um, stopping points when you're going deeper into the continent. It's where we refuel, it's uh, where we do pack transfers. It's also really old wintering station. So there's old machinery here, some really old vintage stuff, it's fantastic. Uh, Fossil Bluff is called Fossil Bluff because this place is littered with fossils. So we're just repairing our site and I stumbled across this one here. And these are old squid tentacles that are kind of stuck in the rock. These are super interesting mountains because these are all sedimentary rocks. So this is an ancient seabed and it's all crumbly and that reveals all these amazing fossils. So part of the Antarctic Treaty says we are not allowed to remove any fossils. We can admire them and then put them right back where we found them, but we cannot take them out of Antarctica. Otherwise we're getting quite a lot of trouble. But yeah, have a look. That's one of the coolest crossings I've ever done in my life. A dying glacier. Sad, but incredible. Here is an example of how amazing this place is. I'm almost at the top of Pyramiden, and up here is a fossil. This place has Millions and millions of fossils just lying around. You'll look at there's another one. About the top. Well, I was 10 minutes ago. Heading back down and you can see the tracks. There you go. All the way along that ridge. All the way up. Drop off the back and then back down to Fossil Bluff. There's a flight with four passengers who are staying the night, so. I need to get back so I can refuel the plane. While we're watching this flash flood that I caught with my drone, I thought I might answer some questions from my Instagram about Fossil Bluff. How do we know when the planes are coming and what is going on with schedules and stuff? Well, every night we have a phone call at a set time with Rotherer. This is to check we're all okay and alive and everything's going well, and also to update us with weather forecasts and plans for tomorrow. How do we go to the toilet and how do we have showers? Well, peeing is easy. Uh, pooing is a little more difficult. There is a bin which is flowing back to Rotherer every couple of days when it fills up. And showers, well, I'll just show you this quick clip here. Someone else asked what sort of antiques are left at Fossil Bluff, and there are so many. There's a spice cabinet with spices that say East India Trading Company, which I thought was pretty cool. There are so many reports from all the old dog sled teams that came through all the way from the 60s to the 90s, and they are a fascinating read, and there's a lot of near deaths. There's also an old muskeg tractor that drove on the sea ice from Stonington. 
to Fossil Bluff, but the sea ice has never been as good as when it came over, so it's never been removed. So it's stuck in the garage right now, and it still fires up to this day. Today, so we've got some aubergine and carrots. Three week old freshies. Well, three week old freshies, but still freshies nonetheless. Uh, yeah, it should be, should be a good, good meal for today. This is the comms area of Fossil Bluff. Every hour, we need to ring Rotherer and give them weather updates so they can decide if planes can fly through or not. We have a high frequency HF radio. We have satellite phones to back that up in case it goes down. We have a very high frequency radio which can go a couple kilometers to communicate with planes as they're coming into land. Marine VHF radios to communicate with each other as we go around the local area. That is all the communications we have at Fossil Bluff. There is no internet and nothing else that we can use to communicate with the outside world. Once we've finished landing planes and doing maintenance around Fossil Bluff, we're allowed to do whatever we want. So we can play Scrabble, or we can walk around the local travel area, or we can sleep, which I tend to do a lot of because this is a lot of work being here. But I love it, nonetheless. Dog spent the night growling or fighting over pieces of blubber and snow petrol. Uh, heard quarrelling all over carcasses of the seal in the night. That's amazing. Wiley having considerable trouble ski walking due to torn muscle in his groin, 1967. This one's amazing. This one's really good. Yeah. Lie up, lie up, lie yeah, up, lie yeah, up, yeah. lie up, travelling. So if you read, it's, they, they explain why they had all the layups. For an aircraft to come in to deliver 20 days worth of food. Okay. Cause they, so they were waiting on food the whole time. And then the snow condition was three foot deep, like fresh powder. So they said, I think it, it words it as like, it may have been quite the challenge or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Achilles from the Comets had to be put down as he was being dragged by the rest of the team. And his arthritis had eventually caught up with him. It was discovered in 1832. Yeah, but by sea, you'd imagine. I mean, not by air. Lethargy feeling on awakening. Uh, found it difficult to come out of sleep and in, and this was unusual while sledging. On eating porridge, suddenly vomited into my hand. Quote, Lethargy um, at the time. I don't usually do this sort of thing. Went out of the tent and loud buzzing noise in ears, heart pumping and bumping in chest. Heavy breathing, in fact, panting. I'm carrying boxes of dog food, 70 pounds. Legs rubbery and weak. Went stumbling over the snow, more sickness, and lying in the snow to recover. Severe headache all the time outside. Dr. Williams says that could quite well have been carbon monoxide poisoning. Jesus. I love that we still use Primuses to this day. There's one right there. <laughs> so yeah, Stonington Island, Refuge Island, Terra Firma Island, Mushroom Island, Puffball Island. So and they started at Stonington, right? Stonington. Well, Adelaide technically, and then they started across Adelaide, then to Stonington, Stonington, and Refuge, which is slightly further south, like kind of just around the point there. Okay, I think it's there. Yeah, then Terra Firma. Terra firma. Mushroom. Mushroom. Puffball. Uh, which is kind of in between there and the point. So yeah, it's roughly there. And then Cape Jeremy Barrier, which is the bit that goes across those two. Oh, yeah. Cape yeah. Jeremy. Yeah. Then along the west, the eastern coast of the island of the King George, the, or Alexander Island, sorry. So all the way down there to Ablation Point. Which is there. And then to finish the fossil bluff. To here. Fuck it. Uh, so they do that with dogs? Yeah, all with dogs. Uh, three teams of like five dogs, six dogs. And how long did it take them? 30 days. Wow. <laughs>